In the last video, we had a look at Firebase together with Abe, and he walked us through Firebase here, through the most important features for us, which are authentication, database storage, and hosting, as well as cloud functions. Now, of course, you can dive much deeper into Firebase, and the official documentation is certainly a great place to do so, just as the other series I have on this channel about View, Beautify, and Firebase, there we will also use some of these Firebase features, for example, the database, storage, and authentication. Now, in the previous video, however, we had a look at a project, this project here, where we were able to sign in and sign up. So we did sign up in the last video already, therefore I can use these credentials to sign in and we see some messages here, we can add new messages. I want to quickly have a look at what goes on behind the scenes and with that I mostly mean the code. So it's a basic Angular app, a link can be found in the video description and if we have a look at the Firebase service there, which is where all the interaction with Firebase happens, here we can see that I got a couple of methods interacting with Firebase through the Firebase SDK. Now here's an important thing. If you check out the documentation, which you can find by clicking on go to docs on the top right here. If you go there and you click on guides and there you expand real time database, you will see that there's a web guide using the JavaScript SDK and you could also target REST endpoints with AJAX requests. So there are different ways of interacting with the database. Though if you want to use the real-time part of it using the web sockets and taking easily advantage of them, you should use the JavaScript SDK as I do here. So what's going on here? Well, for example, when we sign the user in, I'm reaching out to the Firebase object, which I import from the Firebase NPM package, which is just the SDK I installed, so a JavaScript package I installed. There, I then call the auth method, which basically gives me access to all the authentication related helpers the JavaScript SDK provides. And with sign in with email and password, a very descriptive method name in my opinion, we can easily pass an email and a password, which I fetch from my Angular form, and do just that, sign in. And then Firebase will either return a success case, which we handle the then block, where we get the user which was signed in, or we get an error which we can simply output. And here error next simply pushes this error to a subject and the error given back by Firebase actually already contains an error message, which we also saw in the previous video, where we can basically, well, see something like this email and password is not valid or something like that. It's the same for signing user up. We get out, reach out to the Firebase SDK. We then basically just activate the authentication related features or we dig into those by calling the auth method. And then here it's the create user with email and password method, which allows us to do just that. So this is how we use the SDK and this is what we used behind the scenes in the last video. We also got the listen to messages and send message method. Send message is called whenever I click send here on this button. Now, send message does just what the name implies. Again, I use the Firebase SDK. I then do not call off as a function, but database, that's a function call here. And just as off gave me access to all the authentication related methods, database gives me access to all the database related methods. Now, here's an interesting function I call thereafter, ref. If we have a look at the Firebase database by clicking on database in our Firebase console, we basically see here, we got our messages. Messages are pushed onto an array, but it's this messages node which is interesting. We get a reference to this node with the ref call. The interesting thing is if we add a node here, which doesn't exist yet. So if I would add an S here and change that, it would create a new node. So you don't have to create that node on the back end before you access it. It works the other way around. So that's what we do with ref. We either create a node or use an existing one. And then push is one of the ways we can write data. Push, as the name suggests, pushes a new JavaScript object onto this node. And push basically means it adds it to a list. This list then automatically gets populated with items which receive 
well, this lexical ID here, where we have uh, a clear unique identifier for each item, which then contains whichever data our object here contained, content and a user ID. Here it's a hard-coded user ID because I'm recording this video after we made some other changes, but that's the only change I made here. In the end, what we do here is we push the JavaScript object, Firebase will convert this into JSON and store it in our database. And again, we get back a success result or potential errors. Now, interesting is how we listen to changes thereafter. We again reach out to the Firebase SDK, to the database method, and then to the node we want to listen for changes. And I'm saying listen and not fetch, because Firebase is all about being a real-time database. Now, theoretically, you can all just fetch a snapshot and go with that. There is another method you can use. It's called once. Here, however, I'm using on and not once, because I just don't just want to fetch data once, I want to react to changes, I want to listen to changes. And since Firebase basically uses WebSockets behind the scenes, it informs me whenever my data changes. So here, I listen to a certain event, and value is not any random word I entered here. Value is the event we wanna to listen to because it means whenever the value of this node, so of the messages node, changes. Now, here we got our messages stored and whenever I add a new message and whenever I push a new message onto that node, clearly the value of the node, of the messages node changes because we added a new element. So then this, well, trigger here basically is called. So the value event fires and Firebase will automatically execute this method, this anonymous method here, where we get the new data. And data is just our array of messages because we just get the data of the messages node and the messages node happens to be a list of messages. So that's what we get with data. And then all I do here is just transform the data in a way that I can use it. So I basically loop through all the messages and push the elements, which we can access with the well helper method that just gives us access to the values of the individual node items, so the list items. So it gives us access to content and user ID in this case. I push these objects onto my messages array. I found it important to highlight that, and of course you will see this in action in my view, Beautify and Firebase series, where we set this up from ground, where we basically built this all from ground. I wanted to highlight how it works though right now because we did use it in the previous video. Now with that, let's move on and let's take a closer look at how we should actually structure our data here in the database and how we may use rules to control who's able to write what into our database. 